All right. Welcome, everybody, to the latest uh, hangout here at Zora World Headquarters in Foster City. Thanks so much for joining. Today, we're going to geek out. So we've got, um, with the release of our next-gen Zora for Salesforce, we thought we would dive into some technical stuff. So I know usually I'm boring you with uh, observations on the market, but today we're going to get way down into the meat. We're going to be talking about uh, platforms and software stacks and, you know, especially in light of the one million dollar hackathon going on at Dreamforce, we're hoping that somebody can actually uh, uh, include our stuff in the mix and build a, build a killer app based on Zora for Salesforce. So, once again, I've got uh, Mikey at the controls, but I've also got a special guest, Randy Patty, who's going to uh, be joining us and doing uh, and doing the demo. Pop your head in here and say hi, Randy. Hey guys, how's it going? All right. So uh, let's uh, let's jump into the material. So I had somebody on my team the other day say, "Hey, Travis, what's a stack?" We got off a call with a bunch of developers, and they were talking about their stack. And uh, this particular employee, who shall go unnamed, said, well, "What is that?" And I said. Hey, a stack is just a set of software components that people typically use together. So, uh, the uh, ever popular LAMP stack is an example, right? Where you've got uh, a Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, right? So, but why do they? Why do people use a stack, and what are the benefits of a, of, a, of a stack? So, you know, people can relate to my stereo example there. Uh, you know, you can have best of breed components; they are known to work well together. Uh, they scale well over time, um, and you can upgrade them independently, right? Because no one wants to end up like this with the TV VCR combo that's probably in the back room at uh, at your grandmother's house. Uh, so, but what we're seeing in our customer base is they're talking about Zora and Salesforce as the basis of their business stack. So this is really really interesting because we have People using Salesforce as a major component of their business stack, of course. They're using us, but they're using them together in really, really interesting ways. Uh, and that is really what, what we're talking about with Zora for Next Gen and the stuff that we're going to be showing at, uh, at Dreamforce in a couple of weeks. But uh, everybody knows what a platform means to developers and what kind of, you know, what, what facilities you need to have to make developers efficient. And if you look at a platform like Force.com, uh, you know you've actually got a marketplace for end users to find and install apps, being the App Exchange. You've got this mechanism known as managed packages, which enable a developer to create an application and install it as one cohesive element and upgrade it all together instead of swapping out components. Uh, you've of course got native applications. You've also got non-native applications that can use things like iframes. So you know, and there are a bunch of other things that uh, make that platform friendly for developers, so that they don't have to build everything from scratch themselves. Um, but what a platform means to end users, and a lot of the folks that leverage Zora, is that as a non-technical person. They can first of all go and install us from the App Exchange along with the other uh, 2016 apps as of yesterday. Uh, pretty incredible. Uh, but you also can do things like uh, approval workflow routing, things like uh, configurable page layouts, lookup fields, you know, change your default values so that um, you know sales reps don't pick the wrong thing, which is a which you know happens or is known to happen. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of people um, leverage these tools on the Salesforce platform along with Zora for Salesforce to create new things that we couldn't have even imagined. Uh, companies like Five Stars and companies like, uh, uh, like uh, Engine Yard and Splunk, they're building applications where you can take a credit card right from within Salesforce. They're doing all kinds of crazy things. And what we've done with NextGen, uh, I know you probably won't be able to see all this detail, so we'll put the slides up on SlideShare, but we've really built out a componentization architecture that allows, again, uh, somebody like a Salesforce admin 
to configure our stuff in an interesting and meaningful way for their end users. Um, so, you know, the benefits, again, easy customization uh, and, you know, a relatively effortless upgrade, especially in comparison to some of the, uh, some of the old things we have to, had to deal with. Uh, but of course, our, our, our product managers have, uh, have their favorite analogy, which is sort of like the Legos and, uh, and being able to build a really cool thing like a race car. Anybody should be able to grab these pieces, put them together in an interesting, meaningful way, and roll it out to their end users. So, um, you know, basically we're, we're, we're talking about Zora for Salesforce, which has several components now. We've got um, Z360 which is really the ability to take billing data and synchronize it in with a Salesforce account. We've got something that we call Z quotes that we'll be showing as well, right, which is the ability to, uh, to configure a quote, to get it out to an end user, have it signed. And then we've also got uh, ZDK, which is really, um, really, if you are a more technical developer or, you know, force developer, it's kind of like the bucket of bolts that allows you to, to, to really get down in the detail and, and build what you like. So without further ado, let's uh, uh, switch the screen over to uh, Randy and let's, uh, let's see a demo. All right, hey guys. Um, so let's, uh, let's take you through some product now. So what you're looking at here on my screen um, is we actually here my Salesforce login. And uh, what we're going to look at today is really how Zora for Salesforce comes into play. So to begin with, what you're viewing here is a couple of dashboards. These are salesforce.com dashboards that is really providing information that Zora provides. And to you know, reiterate what, what Travis said, this is all unique and, and very native on the uh, force.com platform. You know, to take you through a bit of the information here, for example, these dashboards um, can, can kind of help your sales representatives. You know, they can uh, look at things such as AR, they can look at aging, you know, perhaps if you want your reps to go and drive collection, you can have a look at, you know, your monthly recurring revenue by your products. So you can sort of have a look at, you know, how that is broken down, which products have better uptake than others, for example, and uh, perhaps you want to drive down into, you know, which accounts, for example, are coming up for renewal, you know, go and minimize customer churn. Now, where exactly is all of this data coming from? Well. If I go into one of my accounts here in salesforce.com, such as NGZS, there's some basic information here which we all see um, you know, all the time. We have some account information, the details of it, I have a couple of contacts set up and, and a few opportunities. But really what you're missing is the understanding of your relationship with this particular customer. So if I scroll down on this particular account, here's where you start to see what Zora provides. And here's all the native objects that is part of the uh, out-of-the-box salesforce.com product. So this is really, you know, what does this allow you to do? You know, as a sales representative, this allows me to see, you know, when are my customers coming up for renewal, um, how much are they worth to me, and what exactly do they own? You know, if I look at the subscriptions, I can see, you know, things such as what, what is their monthly recurring revenue. I can drill down into what products they have, you know, what the actual charges are. And you know, if I if I change roles and I become an account management team or I become a support organization, where this allows me to view, you know, what does my customer actually pay? You know, if they are incurring a charge, if they are processing payments or refunds in the account, really driving down into the details of this particular account. And again, all of this is supplied by Zora. Now, in a typical sales process, you know, if you look at a quote to cash process, as a sales representative in uh, in this tool, what I typically want to do when setting up a new order is I'll come to opportunities. I'll go ahead and create a, a new opportunity. And to that opportunity, I would, let's say, go and create a new quote. And this is really where you see the power of Sora uh, for Salesforce coming into play with our quotes application. Now, I'll take you through that uh, flow. We'll kind of show you what it looks like. Um, and we'll do this in, in, in two phases. First, what we'll do is you know, if I go and, uh, and set up a new quote, and I'll kind of tab these here so it's easy to navigate around. But if I go and set up a new quote up here, <clears throat> really what it takes me through, through to is a screen which already identifies all the information that is related with this account. So it doesn't go and create a new billing account, but it picks up this information, says one already exists, and asks me what I want to do with these new orders that I create. You know, Zora World, these are called subscriptions, right? So do I want to go and create a new subscription? Do I want to go and create any changes? Do I ever want to go and renew it? Um, and sadly enough, you know, all customers don't stay with us all the time. So in the event where they want to cancel, we've given you that option as well. 
Now, the complexity of this comes in when we start to look at change orders. So, for example, if I go and select the amend existing tab, here you'll see that the system automatically goes and picks up any existing subscriptions that this customer has. And now I can start to make um, changes to that. You mean I can prorate and I can co-terminate? Absolutely. You could have multiple products, and all of that is calculated for you behind the scene automatically. So um, let's, let's dive into some of the details. <clears throat> to note, you know, something that's really um, impressive about this particular solution and, and what we've been doing with Zora for Salesforce is everything that you see on the screen is componentized. Every layout, every field is fully customizable by you, and you can give it your own look and feel as you please. As you please. You know, the page flows can be customized, um, and anything that you see on the screen can really be tailored to, to what you want to view. So you know, if I kind of move forward in here and I get to the next screen, this is now moving to uh, what we call our product selector, and it's been completely redesigned. And this is really the page that your sales reps choose to go uh, and select the products which they want to go and add to a quote. Now, in this particular instance, I'm doing a change. I'm, doing, I'm amending an existing order. And this gives me full capabilities to, let's say, go and delete them off a basic plan. And I can go and add them, or let's say upsell them, to, um, let's say, a, a standard plan, or perhaps a business plan. And you know, when I select these buttons, it starts to provide information to me, which, again, is the source from the Zora world. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of products set up, and you know, to kind of get around that, we've built in you know, a couple of tools to make you know, life easier for you, so you can start to now drill down and filter up a couple of products, so you can start to get the details of it. But once I start to select a particular product, this is where we start to see all the plans which are associated with it. So here was the basic plan which my customers want, here's a premium plan, and here's a standard plan, and each of them come with descriptions as well. Once selected, this is when we can start to dive down into what exactly the charges are for this particular plan. And this can start to get very tailored where you start to see things such as all your charges, for example. You know, if I go and, um, let's say, select a different product over here, you can start to look at charges such as one-time charges. You can start to have a look at reoccurring charges. And you can also start to have a look at um, your usage based charges, which are usually charged in arrears, right? So this is really helping your sales, uh, your sales reps be um, really flexible with regards to what they are providing to your customers, what they are looking at in terms of their options for the particular plan, and also allows them to do customer-specific discounting, for example. So if I looked at you and I said, you're a really great customer, you can be a new logo for me, why don't I go ahead and give you a 50% discount off the setup fee? You know, that immediately takes effect and all of those changes get added to the, uh, to the system itself. Hey, Randy, what if, what if as a VP of sales, I don't want my sales rep to be able to give a 50% discount? Yeah, absolutely. So this is, again, because this is all componentized, this can be entirely removed. So if you don't want to show discounts, or you want to just block that feature off, so it's not, you know, just not make it visible, you have full control over that. <clears throat> So let's say we go ahead and we add this, uh, you know, this new product to the plan. What this actually does is it moves across into, uh, into a view which starts to give me what we call a quote summary. So really what it's showing me here is the products that they used to have on their old subscription and in green the products that they're going to be moving to as part of their new subscription. And uh, one of the really important things about this is we've gone ahead and we've approved a lot of the metrics. And you know, metrics are things such as your MMR, such as your monthly recurring revenue, and also, quite importantly, your total contract value, your TCV. And this really tells me how my customer is changing in time with regards to the value of their to me. So if I go and upsell them to a new product, I can see that perhaps this month I'm not making a lot of money on them, but in the end, my, my TCV has actually increased across the lifetime of this. And all of these metrics are automatically calculated from this particular change which we put in place. Now, at this point in time, you have a couple of options of what you want to do. So what we've introduced as well is the ability to go ahead and crash uh, credit cards directly from this. So you can go and enter in information, um, which is part of your entire quoting flow as well. We've also gone ahead and given you the ability to generate documents. You know, so for example, if I've gone ahead and built up some quote, I can go ahead and generate a PDF. And this PDF can be built uh, you know, on a, a number of templates which the system is already set up to have. So if I have different types of customers, if they focus on different types of industries, I can have quotes set up for each one of them with different logos, different branding, and a very specialized look and feel. And this quote gets attached to the opportunity itself. So I can come in and I can uh, you know, preview that. I can see what it looks like. 
And I also have the ability to go and send it out with DocuSign as well. And DocuSign is really the ability for you to go and take that out and you know, email documents to your customers uh, electronically, and they'll get this view, and they can come in and start to you know, put in their signatures, you know, put in their timestamps, and send that document back to us electronically in a very secure manner, which then allows us to move forward in the, uh, in the coding process. <clears throat> so, um, you know, once you start to look at the system, how easy it is to move from point A to point B, all of this has been designed for you, and is allowed to make it a really easy to use interface, really easy to go and configure and manipulate, um, and really choose exactly what you want to do with this particular code flow, which is all you know the data that's provided from Zora uh, behind the scenes. Great. All right, Randy, thank you very much. So uh, if anybody has any questions uh, for us, please go ahead and chat them into the uh, uh, into the chat window on on G plus and uh, and we'll take them right now. Um, but uh, basically to wrap up, you know, uh, Zora plus Salesforce is really the best of breed sort of commerce integration. So if you are a recurring revenue company, if you're a subscription company, and you really need to incorporate uh, those unique aspects to how you price and package into your workflow, you know, that's really what we're enabling through Zora for Salesforce. And it's not just for sales, right? With 360, Anybody who's you know in service and support uh, who needs to look at a customer and to be able to see what plan they're on, uh, what their last month's bill was, any of those kinds of things that you need to be able to see uh, as a uh, as a service and support rep, we're bringing all that into uh, natively into Salesforce, and then as Randy showed, the quote process or the order process or the you know the capture the payment method. You know, all these things really what what are morphing into it's almost like a configure price quote capability for companies that uh, are not selling hard goods, really selling recurring revenue, subscription, you know, software as a service type solutions. Um, and as you see, we've got a bunch on here that are uh, that are that are joint customers with Salesforce. Again, people like DocuSign and Box and Informatica and Concur and Splunk. Um, you know, who are using these capabilities today. So, and we'll be showing some of the highlights of, of these actual customer applications at Dreamforce. So, uh, and then, uh, you know, one of the other things that we're seeing that's very interesting, when we get into the sort of B to any, you know, again, to geek out a little bit, we, we like to get into the boxes and arrows of acquire a customer over the web, put that customer in Salesforce, have an enterprise rep go grab that customer and upsell them, and you know you can kind of see here the uh, you know the legend for the flow diagram. We've got Salesforce, we've got a customer website, uh, and then we've got Zora. We have the ability to configure a lot of different scenarios to allow you to acquire a customer lightweight over the web, uh, and then uh, again to to potentially upsell them through. Uh, you know, through a uh, through a sales rep that is sitting in front of uh, in front of CRM. So, any questions, Mikey? Do we do we have any questions that have come in from the audience? Yeah. First question: Does your data end up in the Salesforce database? Yes, it does. Yeah, actually, it does guys. So that's uh, that's actually one of our key features. It allows us to go ahead and report on it. It allows us to go ahead and, uh, and set up triggers. Um, and really, you know, it's uh, it can integrate as well or talk to other the you know some of the standard um, or even some of the custom applications which live on the force.com platform. Yeah, that's that's really great. Um, what else have we got for questions, Mikey? What is the skill set to configure and set up Zora for Salesforce? Yeah, that's that's actually quite simple. You know, so you just need very basic admin skill sets um, or even developer skill sets because this uh, entire application for us is. Um, customizable and it's component based, it makes it very easy for you to jump into the system, easily configure it, and uh, have those displays updated on the fly to the users of the system. Yeah, to, so if you can change things like a page layout, you can use us. Yep. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. That, I, can, I can actually do that. <laughs> I, I used to be the admin here before I had my rights taken away, so um, <laughs> even I can do that. All right. That's, that's great. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, is 
Is there any integration platform used underneath Zora for Salesforce? In other words, do I need to buy anything else beyond Zora and Zora for Salesforce to be able to use this? Great question. The answer is no, but I'll, I'll let you talk about the uh, APIs and yeah. all that stuff under the hood. Right, right. right. So as you've mentioned a number of times, you know, Zora for Salesforce is actually native on the Force.com uh, you know, platform, and we have an entire team, as you would know, of dedicated developers, which bring up releases on a monthly basis. They're continually working on this product, and we give you a couple of options for using it, right? So as I mentioned, it's an application. You can jump onto Salesforce.com. You can install it. Uh, you know, both the coding process as well as the synchronization. And, you know, if you really want to get excited about it, you and you are a developer, you can even use the ZDK, you know, Zora's development kit, and you can really get into, you know, the nuts and bolts of the application and build it out. And we're not going to leave you out in the dark. We actually have an entire support team in the case that you choose to go with the ZDK as well. Great. Yeah. That's fantastic. And that's some of what we're going to be showing, right, at, uh, at Dreamforce is some, some yeah. of the some of the applications our customers have built? That's right, yeah. Dreamforce is actually going to be really uh, interesting because we are going to share a whole lot of features out of the box. Um, I know I've touched on just a little bit of it today in the demo, but you're going to have a look at things such as page flows and creating really tailored uh, workflows for your coding process. Yeah. You can have a look at, you know, as you mentioned, page layouts, changing fields, changing your look and feel. Um, you can also get down into the, uh, the nuts and bolts of how easy that is because I did not show that to you today, but it's just a matter of clicking a couple buttons yeah. and it's done. And it is so simple. It's really exciting. Um, and there's a whole lot of uh, other details we've kind of put behind the scenes, which I don't want to, you know, steal anyone's thunder, jump too much into <laughs> right now. So, uh, you know, yeah. rather come to Dreamforce and have a look at it. Yeah. So, uh, Hannah will, will, will make us uh, uh, let everybody know we're going to be at Moscone West 212. Uh, we've got a bunch of events uh, at One Kearney. And then we have the block party, which I think is Wednesday night. Wednesday is that night. right? Yep. So yeah, we're, it's not competing with Green Day, because Green Day is on Tuesday. Okay. So Green Day on Tuesday, block party on Wednesday. Got it. Yeah. Well, listen. Thank you, everybody who joined in for today's Google Hangout. This will be available on our uh, Google Plus page uh, for uh, for um, you know for further viewing pleasure. But thanks again, everybody, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again uh, in two weeks. Or actually at Dreamforce. What am I saying? Dreamforce. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much.